if a CPU is 30% faster at gaming and you upgrade to it, like 30% faster than the CPU you currently have, and you upgrade to that 30% faster CPU, question, will your games run 30% faster? The answer is probably no and not even close. So what I'm getting at here is whenever a big new CPU launch comes out, I like to remind my viewers that just because it's X percent faster than whatever you currently have, it does not mean that buying that is actually going to improve your games by that amount. And that's because CPU reviews are done, and I'm specifically talking about gaming CPU reviews, they're done in a very specific way to intentionally create a CPU limited situation to measure the maximum performance advantage one of the CPUs can give you over the other one. But those situations that they're creating are incredibly unrealistic and uncommon in the vast majority of gaming situations. And that does not mean that those CPU reviews are bad or done wrong or, mis or intentionally misleading or dishonest or trying to get you to spend more money than you need to. They're doing what they need to do, which is isolate the CPU as the performance limit so that you can see the difference. However, when you just look at those numbers and you're like, oh, that CPU is 30% faster, better buy that, I'm gonna get 30% better performance, you know, that's just not how it works. Because when a video game is being rendered by your computer, there's some work done by the CPU and some work done by the GPU. And the work that those are doing is not the same, and one of them will be the limiting factor at any moment in time on how fast your PC is running the game. This is the idea of a CPU or GPU bottleneck, is what a lot of people call it. And a lot of people misunderstand this, and they think, oh, my PC has a bottleneck, I need to fix that. But what we mean by bottleneck here is there is going to be a limit on how fast your PC can render a game. You're not gonna be running games at an infinite frame rate. At some point, the PC is working as fast as it can to render the game. That limiting factor will be either the CPU or the GPU, unless you've put some kind of a frame rate limit on the situation artificially. So, usually, people are actually limited by the GPU. Now, in competitive esports type situations, people will often intentionally turn down graphic settings and render resolution in order to increase their frame rates really high. And this is where CPU reviews might be a bit more realistic. But for a lot of gaming situations, uh, they're very unrealistic because what they do is they take a usually the highest end graphics card currently available. So a lot of the new CPU reviews here are being done on like a 3090 Ti. And then they take the 3090 Ti and they run the games at a low resolution, like maybe 720p or 1080p. And they often times don't run the games at maximum graphics settings. And all of this matters because the CPU, the work that it's doing to render the game is usually not, uh, it usually doesn't get more difficult as the graphics settings and resolution increase, especially the resolution. The GPU is having to calculate the color of every pixel on your screen. So the more there are, the higher the resolution is, right? 720p, 1080p, 1440p, 4K, the more pixels are on the screen, the harder the GPU is having to work. And it can be a lot harder as those resolutions go up. But the CPU, most of the work it's doing is not on a per pixel basis. It might be doing things like calculating the NPC AI of the cars driving around a city in a scene or some of the physics that's happening. But the physics is going to happen regardless of what, you know, how many pixels are being rendered on the screen, that type of a thing. So in general, the CPU's workload stays the same regardless of the render resolution. Well, whereas the GPU uh, you know, has less work to do, the lower the render resolution goes. So some people phrase this, and I don't like how they phrase this. You see this all the time online on, on PC video comments, on, on, on the threads about building a PC, all sorts of things. People say that lower resolutions are harder on the CPU 
and higher resolutions are harder on the GPU. And that's kind of correct. It, it is true that higher resolutions are harder on the GPU. Lower resolutions are the same on the CPU. What the thing is, is if your CPU is going to try to feed frames to your GPU as fast as it can, but if your GPU is unable to process the next frame, your CPU can just wait until your GPU is ready. But um, if your GPU is starving, it, it's ready, it, it's working hard, it can process more frames, your CPU is gonna try to feed it as fast as it can, but at some point your CPU will just be unable to feed your GPU the next frame if the render resolution is low enough, the graphic settings are low enough, and the C GPU is powerful enough, okay? And that's what creates that CPU limit. And that's, it's easier to become CPU limited at lower resolutions because the GPU is having an easier time to produce frames at those lower resolutions. Now, when it comes to graphic settings, the um, most graphic settings don't affect the CPU that much. Some of them do. And surprisingly, actually, ray tracing can actually have a big impact on CPU performance, um, which a lot of people don't realize, because ray tracing is incredibly demanding on the GPU. So usually as you turn up graphic settings, the GPU has to work harder. So you think that turning up graphic settings will always increase your GPU bottleneck. Um, but ray tracing is a bit weird, where it's incredibly hard on the GPU, but it can also increase the number of CPU calls that are happening. And so it can sometimes go, go either way, where it might actually end up bottlenecking you on the CPU side of things uh, before it even hits your GPU, depending on your CPU and GPU. But back to my main point here, um, these CPU reviews are intentionally lowering the resolution and the and sometimes the graphics settings to make, uh, uh, and using an incredibly powerful graphics card at those lower resolutions to create an unrealistic situation that shows off the potential performance difference between the CPUs. But in most situations, if you're playing at 1440p or 4K on a, you know, a, a mid-range GPU with graphics settings up, you know, pretty high, most people are turning up graphic settings until their frame rate gets too low and then they back them off a little bit. So usually you're adjusting your graphic settings to keep yourself GPU limited, but getting a high enough frame rate that you're willing to work with. For some people, that's 60 frames per second. Maybe you're targeting more than that, 90 frames per second, 100 frames per second. But the point is that's where most people are most of the time. Uh, other than, like I said, maybe competitive esports players, where they'll turn down all the graphic settings, they'll turn the render resolution below what their monitor is capable of. They might buy a 1080p monitor with a 360 hertz refresh rate, you know, that kind of a thing, uh, because they're uh, they're trying to get as many frames as they possibly can to get a competitive advantage. Because if your game is rendering frames quicker and an enemy pops around the corner, if you see them a few milliseconds sooner, you know, then you have a competitive edge there, right? So one place where maybe going a little bit overboard on your CPU and RAM compared to your GPU could make sense is if your primary use of your gaming PC is competitive esports games where you play at low settings, low resolution, and you're shooting for hundreds of frames per second. But for a lot of people, spending $300 on a CPU is actually complete overkill. The 7600X is $300. The motherboards that go with it are hundreds of dollars. The DDR5 RAM that goes with it could be a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> Whereas if you bought something like a Ryzen 5 5600 and a uh, cheap AM4 motherboard and some cheap DDR4 RAM, you can get in the door for hundreds of dollars less. And that platform, that CPU motherboard RAM platform can, can produce frame rates as high as most people need in most games. And so if that allows you to then shift hundreds more dollars towards the GPU part of your budget, you're likely to end up being able to either go with like a higher resolution monitor uh, to make your games look better, 
or go with, uh, you know, play the games at higher frame rates to make the games feel smoother, uh, turn up the graphic settings to make the games look better. In other words, in most situations, shifting more of your budget towards the GPU than the CPU is going to make sense. But that doesn't mean that nobody should run out and buy these expensive new CPUs. Having the latest and greatest thing can be really fun, and this hobby can be a fun hobby and an expensive hobby, and some people are fine putting that money towards it. But if you're on a budget, I recommend skipping this generation for now until pricing on both the CPUs and motherboards and the RAM all decrease. Um, otherwise, for value-oriented builds, I'm still going to re be recommending uh, a Ryzen 5 5600 or a 12400F from Intel. So if you're going to be buying the highest-end GPU anyway, and you still have money in your, in your budget, that's where shifting more of that money towards higher-end CPUs, I think, makes sense. Also, uh, in, in the platform cost here, these new CPUs, like the 7600X, doesn't come with a stock cooler, whereas the old Ryzen 5600s and like the Intel 12400 did come with stock coolers, which might be a little bit noisy, it might run a little bit hot, but you'd get pretty much the full, um, the full stock performance out of those CPUs. Whereas in the reviews I'm seeing here for the 7600X in this whole lineup, these things are targeting 95 Celsius, and they're supposed to run that hot. Um, and then they'll try to speed up their clock speeds as much as they can uh, and then hitting that, that temperature limit, meaning that the better cooling you have can possibly produce significantly better performance, but better cooling does cost a lot more money. So in addition to the more expensive CPU, motherboard, and RAM, you'd probably also want to be spending more on your CPU cooler here, although I'm really going to look forward to channels that... Um, uh, benchmark these CPUs on lower end coolers. Like I want to see how does a $20 CPU cooler perform on a 7600X versus a $80 or $100 CPU cooler. I, I'd really be curious how much performance you're gaining or losing there uh, based on the cooling solution that, that you choose here since there's no stock cooler to test. Now the other th elephant in the room here with these Ryzen 7000 specifically, a lot of what I said today applies to any new CPU launch, but with these specifically, is that the um, Ryzen <laughs> uh, 5800X 3D uh, that's available on the cheaper AM4 platform and runs on cheaper DDR4 memory in gaming workloads is not beat by much by the 7600X. <laughs> Now, maybe that 5800X 3D is, you know, a little bit more expensive still than the 7600X, but once you factor in the rest of the platform cost, I think it's actually cheaper, especially for people who already own an AM4 motherboard and DDR4 memory, and you're just on an older CPU. Uh, it might make more sense cost-wise cost to upgrade to the 5800X 3D, or just to wait, because if you wait, we are going to see new Intel CPUs coming out soon, and maybe those aren't going to be any better value, but more competition could put downward pressure on these CPUs. They may, may offer a lot better value. We shall see. Um, but then also, AMD is likely to then release their uh, 3D vCache versions of the 7000 series to regain the performance crown from Intel's 13th gen. Because according to the leaked benchmarks we've seen, I think it's going to be competitive, but I do think the 13th gen probably will be faster uh, for, for gaming and, and also productivity. And it was, I think the 13th gen, like, I think the 7000 is pulling a little ahead of the 12th gen, but 13th gen might pull a little bit ahead. It's going to be super close, but I think we'll probably see the X3D chips, um, which for gaming performance, I, I think will, will, should give us a big boost again, like we saw with the 5000 series. But anyway, this could all get you into that trap. This is the perpetual trap with PC building and being a PC gamer, is you can always wait for something better. PCs always get more powerful over time. The components get better, there's new stuff coming out. Um, so yes, you could always wait, but at some point, it's okay to just buy the best thing that you can right now. 
and just if it meets your performance needs great and then honestly turn off channels like mine if it's going to make you feel like um you know you're missing out on the on the next greatest thing because <laughs> um you know you can always wait but maybe you want a gaming pc right now and waiting another month and then another month and then another month there's always something better coming out can honestly get kind of depressing. <laughs> now, with that being said, there's a new GPU launch coming out, for, uh, you know, you know, in October from NVIDIA. Uh, AMD GPUs should be coming out in November. We've got the I Intel <laughs> CPUs coming out here very soon as well. So while it is true that there's that trap of you can always wait for something better, this particular next couple of months really is the launch of a whole lot of exciting new technology. So I can't help but feel like building a new high-end system right now probably isn't the way to go. But building a more value-oriented PC, like I said, along the lines of a Ryzen 5 5600 or a you know 12400F from, uh, from Intel with a mid-range GPU, something in the $300 or less category, we're not going to be seeing stuff replacing those value parts anywhere near as soon. So those could make a lot of sense. These higher end things, I think, really is probably worth waiting. I hope this video was useful for you guys. A lot of people misunderstand the CPU, GPU bottleneck situation. It's also important to understand that in any, any particular scene of a game, um, you might be CPU limited or GPU limited, and that can shift even within the same game from scene to scene. And then of course, from one game to another game. So it's, it's complicated. <laughs>